Generations of Hope is a uh, nonprofit organization that has formed an intergenerational community called Hope Meadows that is made up of adoptive families who take in children from the foster care system and seniors who live in the community and volunteer uh, with the program and with the families and the children in many capacities. I was adopted on June 24, 2008. I was adopted. My parents came from South Carolina all the way down here with their one son. These three guys actually moved in with us in September of 2006. And, um, so at one, so from September to December of that year, we actually had all six that were still technically in foster care. Mm -hmm. um, and then even though like with the first three, it took three years yeah. to get their adoption finalized. There was just, just a lot, lot of red, red tape, tape and stuff. And then the other three, it moved really quickly. They were adopted within six months of moving in. We had seen an article in the paper about the program and what drew our interest was we would be able to have more room and bring in more kids and permanency played a big part in it. So we checked into it and we had been accepted as the first family out here. And we've been out here starting our 15th year now after adopting eight children. And they said, did you see the Peoria paper? And I said, no. And they said, they had a write up in there about a place in Rantoul, Illinois, that has started with foster children. So I came over for an interview and I talked to them about um, what I thought I had to offer. And they said, how soon can you get here? <laughs> I just thought, well, this would just be a great place to be and uh, maybe I could do something to help the children. And it'd be nice to be around young people. And of course, they're seniors, people my own age. So, it's just been a really a wonderful experience for me. I, I call it my Leave it to Beaver neighborhood. Everybody out here, they know everybody. They interact, uh, the children interact with the seniors. The parents are always visiting each other, you know. And, and that's the way it should be. They need more communities like this. It gives uh, uh, you a sense of belonging. I mean, a lot of neighborhoods, they don't always know all their neighbors but we can always get together and everybody knows when everybody's birthday is so I'd have to say that's pretty good. tight knit neighborhood. But there's always someone around. Yeah. <laughs> there's always someone there around. Yeah. And it's amazing. Well you saw at the picnic I told Irene I said I don't think you could have a better neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I really don't and even the chief of police he's always bragging about this. I would make my job a lot easier if we had neighborhoods like this all through the, through the country and for other police departments. Quality of life. Quality of life is what I'm talking about. It would be good for ruins quality of life and bring back some of the, uh, um, of the values that we had uh, uh, in years past. The way we gather together as a community and support each other, I think that's what is important because it does take a village to raise a child. So. I like it a lot. Have the have um, parents like work hard to Is that your food um, put together all these programs and stuff. Yeah. I'll say the activities too, cause it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, cause I have a lot of new friends and they play with me almost every day and it's fun. I have six children. The oldest is 19 and the youngest is six. <laughs> I've only adopted four. I've had 16 in my home. I've adopted four, um, two of which are adults now. When the parents come out here, that's a commitment to them. And that's some hard work for them to do because they're opening their doors to new kids that they never opened the door to. Hope is designed to take in the children who are hard to place because of age, because of the behavioral issues. We had some of them that would come in and go up the stairs into the workrooms upstairs and go hide their faces in the corner and stand there until you came because they were afraid. They bring a lot of baggage with them and they've got to lose a lot of that before they can learn the other things. 
and but they learn to trust you you can't rush a kid into the way that you live you gotta just ease it in there and let them work themselves into the house and that's how i feel with the parents but i give them heart for what they do it was hard getting to know them because like me i i used to was abused when i was little so it was hard for me to trust people there's one that was so afraid that when her foster mom took the kids for a bike ride and they came around that curve like this and she was just learning to ride the bike that she could not see them she just screamed so afraid of being left right there right by her own house when you have experienced where a lot of the children have come from um, a lot of the things that they've had to endure it's just that little touch and, and little gestures and just being there is the main thing and I think that's why I'm here the children we bring in we know what they have coming with them we know what we're getting into before we get into it so yeah, it's our choice. We made the choice. I really admire them because it's hard to take another child. Your blood doesn't run through them, through their veins. Probably later on your love does. But I mean to be responsible for their life all the way through, you know, and, and not know their background when you get them. That's a tremendous load. We're now almost 14 years old and it's very clear to us who have been studying this for 14 years that the key to making families work vulnerable families work is uh, meaningful relationships and purposeful engagement and that's what we have here it's what this place is about it's the heart of this place you know it's it's taking people who are alone basically and giving them a family. And so, you know, um, we do the official legal adoptions with the kids, um, but then we have the adoptions of the heart with the seniors. I uh, was retired and witted, and I still felt able to do something, and what was I gonna do? I didn't wanna just sit and twiddle my thumbs, and I just thought, well, this would just be a great place to be, and uh, maybe I could do something to help the children. Hey, Angelo. Charles. 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 How are Charles. you? Charles, what grade are you in? Fourth. Fourth. Third. And third. Need any help with your math? I was a math teacher Ooh. for lots and lots of years. <laughs> well. He likes math a lot. That's half the battle. If we could get you to like it, you know, if he could get you to understand it, I bet you'd get to like it better, too. Angelo, okay, we'll see you tomorrow at Glad the picnic. To meet you. That's your flowers, too. The seniors come in as a, and act as surrogate grandparents. Nobody is matched up with anybody. It's just a natural bonding. Oh, I know, little man, I love you. Oh, I always get this. What do we do when we say goodbye? We go. And then what do we do? It goes like this. He said to me the other day, I love you more than the constellation of the stars, way beyond the constellation of the stars. I said, now figure that one out. <laughs> it means a lot to me, especially like the relationship that I have with Grandma Irene because my mom's gone and I was raised by my grandparents and I've got a void filled in my life too, you know, at the same time as well as the kids do. When we moved here, I, I thought we were moving here to get kids, which we did. We <laughs> got plenty. Um, but I didn't expect to build those really close relationships with with the seniors. You know, I, that was something that, I mean, it's a wonderful blessing. Anytime there's like a sickness or a death in the family or something, the whole community comes together. So you're not by yourself, you know, and they, they support each other in that manner. So it's not just one family going through something, it's the whole community that goes through it together. We are on the playground, Generations of Hope, and this marker marks the, uh, where uh, Mr. Davis's uh, remains are, the, he was cremated. Mr. Davis often supervised the playground. He was known as Grandpa Davis. 
when he passed away, that was his request to be cremated and buried on the playground. Elmer taught me so much about growing old and how one can grow old with purpose. He was active, he was kind, he was patient. This community absolutely, for 10 years, let him be the very best that he could be, even with all of his health problems. Everybody adored him. They adore all of the seniors, and the seniors really love the children and families and each other. Not that it's utopia, it's not, it's a community. But whenever there's a need, this community rallies. I've never seen that it hasn't. When we have um, like ball games or church performances or graduation, even the seniors show, show up. You know, they're there to support the kids mm -hmm. and all their achievements. Yes. And, and any letdowns are there, but we, we have numerous people that go to different things that the kids do, and they, they really support the kids. you got your certain kids that love certain grandmas, but pretty much grandma and grandpa out here, that's how much the kids just love them. Yeah, they love them so much. I enjoy talking with them and sometimes reading to them or have them read to me, and we play games sometimes. It's I've done a little, little bit of everything out here. If you look around the neighborhood, you'll, you'll see birdhouses tacked up on trees. I built those, gave them to the kids to, to paint them or do what they want with them, and uh, they put them up on the trees for the birds. You know, you sit here and you watch the children, and you think, where would that child be if they wouldn't be for yeah. this place? And like one of you said, where would you be? I'm probably vegetating someplace if I would even be on this earth, I don't know. If it wasn't for Brenda coming up with the uh, the idea for this program, there'd be a lot of kids who, who uh, literally would have been institutionalized. Everything is all real. This is real. The lives are real, okay? The commitment is real. It's all real out here. Family starts with who you have in your life first, and you just need somebody to push you through it. And that's what I've had. I've always had somebody just push me through and get through life. But it's just so beautiful to see the little kids come here and there's a complete turnaround. Marty is just really, I'm really, really proud of him and works, he's, he's always out working. No matter how hot it is or how cold, Marty's out doing something. Steven's doing real well. He's, he'll be a senior this year. And him and Marty both, and I'm real proud of them. You really feel like, Will? You evidently had a little small part of it, and I say I'm speaking for myself right now, a small part in maybe helping somebody along the way. I think everyone in Hope Meadows is a hero in some way. Um, you know, they're, they're just ordinary people that do extraordinary things. You know, a community like this, I think, has a lot to offer and hopefully help not only the kids but the seniors and, and the, all the generations here. As we do this replication around the country, um, it's not going to be only about addressing social challenges facing children and youth, but I think ultimately it will be about, and Hope's legacy will be, that we can bring people together in this country from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all educational levels, all races, all ages, and all vulnerabilities. And they can create a community for everyone, so that seniors can age in community, so that children can heal, so that families can get the support they need in this, this troubled time to uh, ensure that their children are growing up in a really safe, supportive, loving community.